Hey everybody, we're back and uh, we're back to do, well, well, we're doing Alice Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> We uh, very, very much enjoyed this movie, and before we get into it, I want to make clear, this is the spoiler version. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Um, we're going to talk all spoilers, we're going to talk anything we want about this movie, or part one, or anything. So, if you haven't seen it, and you don't want things spoiled, please jump on out of here. There's a link in the description for the non-spoiler review, something probably popping up, so you can check that out. And then hopefully you'll come back when you're ready to see the spoilers. Yeah, I hope y'all are gone, y'all are gone, good, we're good to go. Okay, that movie was really, really good. <laughs> I liked the first one, I really, really liked this one. The time travel stuff was very cool. I had no idea there was gonna be like, I mean, I knew it was about time and time is a villain, which we'll get to, but I thought the time travel stuff was cool because we got to see like young Mad Hatter <laughs> and like uh, Cheshire Cat learning how oh. to be invisible. Yeah, that was cute. That was adorable because he only, everything but his tail got invisible and like the puppy version of the dog comes over and bites it and all that, <laughs> you know, to find him. And the, the, the uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum mm -hmm. just being really young and everything was awesome. Yeah. But I love the flashbacks to the Helen Bonner, Helen Bonner, Helen Boner Carter. Um, <laughs> the Red Queen and the White Queen as children and the ex description and explanation of all the hatred yeah. between them. I thought that was really cool. The origin of Big Head. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you got to see how all that happened and it was awesome. Uh, Mad Hatter. Now, we'll get, let's go ahead and get into this. I know it's something she's okay. itching to talk about. But before you start, I'll just say that I really liked it. I thought his performance was excellent in this one. I think he, for me, he found the character more than he did in the first one. So I really liked it. I don't know, it just, it really worked for me. From Dark Hatter to Mad Hatter to Happy Hatter and everything in between was very cool. And I liked getting some of his backstory. The thing is, I felt like he was a little too all over the board, like in the same scene. Like in the same sentence. <laughs> Yes, I understand he's mad. I do. But it this didn't quite work for me. And she's looking for some kind of method to his madness, as she said well, in the other one, and I'm like, but that's well, not the madness. Is, There's no logic to madness. I mean, <laughs> if, 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 if it was like a range of madness across the timeline, I get that. It was like, without a whole lot of reason within like a, within like a scene right but again this is why I'd argue why the performance was rather was rather brilliant this time is because we are relatively sane so that is what madness should look like to sane people the the mad person has a, ma a method to their madness in their mind I'm sure it makes sense it's logical to them but it doesn't appear logical to anyone else yeah. I mean again it's fine that we have di yeah. differing opinions but that's just um, how I took it so also with it like just a tad bit more of the dark hatter yeah, because it was really interesting. It would have been kind of neat to see him like really because flipping out on people. That 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 was one of my favorite parts of Hatter from the first movie was when he go all oh, that dark and that that Scottish bro comes out. Yeah, um, that's true. Because she was really into the Scottish <laughs> bit of it, so I could see why maybe that's um, a thing for you. <laughs> would have liked him to break that out a bit more during the final fight scenes. Yeah, but he never really had a chance to fight because he was motivated by trying to find his family. And then he found them, and then they were captured. Yeah. So, I mean, he never really had that opportunity. I, I kind of have expected it when they didn't find him initially. Because when he's, so, like, so convinced that they're not there, I expected him to go dark hatter and start looking for the queen. But I, I, can, I can understand the emotional motivation in that, too, mm -hmm. that he had regained his hope about finding his family after all this time, and then it was mm -hmm. taken away from him yet again. Yeah, but this time he knew who to blame. But again, but then they got captured so quick, he didn't really, he wouldn't have had time for that emotional turn of... I don't know, I've gotten pissed. Yeah, you're, you're maybe a bit more hair trigger than someone who's a little more happy-go-lucky, like a Mad Hatter. Is <laughs> that was meant to oh, hell no. <laughs> but yeah, so then the, then the Hatter uh, found his family and they were the ant colony, which I thought was kind of cool, even though I saw that a little bit ahead of time. As soon as they showed the Queen's, uh, the, the Red Queen's exile room, mm -hmm. and, and the ant colony was still there, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's got it. She shrank the, the, the family down. So it was a little mm -hmm. obvious, but it didn't bother me that it was obvious. Yeah. Thought I was going to end up really crying hard for something that didn't happen in the movie. But there was something that actually got me a little teary. And uh, I didn't think it was going to roll down my cheeks, but it was just watery eyes. But then, because it sat there for a minute, it rolled down. But uh, And that was the, uh, the the reunion of Mad Hatter and his father. Because they had kind of mm -hmm. shown this whole relationship that Hatter thought his father kind of hated him. And telling his son he's proud. That that got me. But wasn't that pretty much the ex Almost the exact same scene from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, probably, but you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. It was effectively done. I didn't see it coming, and I was already set because we were talking.
talking about time and Alice was carrying around the pocket watch of her father to mm -hmm. have a moment where she was going to be reunited with her dead father. And I was thinking, if that happens, I'm probably going to lose it. <laughs> no, see, I, that, that, I, that never even crossed my mind. It totally crossed my mind, but I'm, you know, but it didn't happen. So, and the little reveal that the time guy, the watches in the deceased room, the whole family mm -hmm. was missing. I did not yeah. make that connection early. You know, until they kind of yeah. flashbacked and showed that, I was like, oh. I guess cool. if, if we had been paying attention to alphabetical order. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, the, how about the seconds? The little seconds. Oh, yeah, they were cute. Especially, Especially the little oil can. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, the oil can. It was very, very, very cool uh, seeing uh, uh, what they, because I, I was wondering what would happen to Crispin Glover's character, and I guess they couldn't, couldn't get him back or whatever, but it was neat seeing that he had been stabbed through the heart and he turned into a Oh, the skeleton. name of hearts. Yeah, yeah, the creator. Okay, so. sorry. Time was really kind of falling in love with her and she was playing oh, him. Oh, Time was fully smitten with yeah, her. Yeah, absolutely. And Sasha Baron Cohen is Time. Fantastic. Yeah. Because uh, because honestly, I thought it was him going in. And then through the movie, I'm like, I don't know if that's him because it's really good. And at the end, I'm like, no, yeah, that's him. So <laughs> so he really did oh, a good job. You that. <laughs> I'm sure you could have, but you know, because I, I hadn't paid that much attention to it. A nice uh, dedication to Alan Rickman at the end, mm -hmm. which is always sad. Actually, going back to the Time character is... Um, the advertising paints him as a villain for the movie, and he's really not. Not at all, and I think that's one of the brilliant things they did. I think it really is. Yeah. It's, it's That's good trailer. It's good advertising. Else, else is the villain in his story. Ultimately, yeah. it really kind of is the Red Queen would have to be the villain of this piece again. Yeah. Because she had the Hatter's family, and that was really the driving force, was finding his family. So I thought that was pretty cool. That, and she nearly destroys the world. Yeah, it's true, and, it, and it's really effective. And that's the moment I was talking about where I had the one moment in the theater where the guy kind of bugged me. Because at the end, man, when like time is destructing itself and everything is just getting frozen in this, uh, what looked like Terrigen mist uh, <laughs> shells. Actually, it looked like, like everything was rusted over. Right, it had more of a rust, but it was reminding me of that kind of thing. Yeah. And like she's about to put the, 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 the sphere back in the thing and she doesn't quite reach it. And everything freezes over and the whole movie just goes silent for a few seconds and I'm literally like I'm on the edge of my like, seat like and, and I think we both had the same thought I was like are they just gonna end it here right like we I mean end it here well, and also I'm just thinking like what are they gonna do I know because I know they're not going to end it here it'd be cool if they did because but. The, the alternate ending would have been you see the uh, looking gra glass where you know Alice passed through from our world into underland uh, it completely rust over Hamish coming in looking over like huh tapping it, shrugging, and walking off. Yeah, that would have been the dark, ballsy ending, but yeah. it is Disney. They had a pop song with the music video in the beginning. I knew that wouldn't happen, even though it would have been majorly applauded by me. <laughs> um, but okay, something else I really liked was the real world stuff. Uh, it kind of reminded me, and I mean the good parts, and I mean this in a good way, but of Sucker Punch. Which is a movie I enjoyed, but but it did because they had the whole uh, mental hospital thing with Alice, mm -hmm. and that that kind of gave me that vibe, <laughs> you know, because it was kind of that same kind of color palette from that movie and everything, yeah. kind of the washed out grays and everything. But that was really cool that she stole the needle and stabbed the doctor in the butt and everything and escaped mm -hmm. via the ropes and all that. So I thought that was really neat. And I love that it opened with her being this badass ship captain yeah. and pulling off this whole impossible trick, you know, and she's like, you know how I feel about that word, captain? <laughs> or uh, whatever, not, she was the captain, yeah, so. Yeah, Bozen. Bozen, yeah. By the way, you were wondering if this movie brought in more elements and such from the books. It used the title as a vague suggestion and went someplace completely different. I feel like maybe they would have touched on some stuff that was in the books that should have been in the first movie that they didn't. Well, so, no? Jabberwocky was shivering through the looking glass. Um, and he did have a little cameo in here as she was traveling through time. Yeah. And actually, White Queen was more uh, looking glass, too. Okay. She had so cool basically, all the elements from Looking Glass that they actually used, they used in the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that they used from Looking Glass for this movie was the Looking Glass. Okay. As a transport device. All right. That was pretty much it. <laughs> that still worked out pretty well. Um, and I really liked the seconds, con like transforming, connecting, combining, turning into minutes. Mm -hmm. And then the minutes combining and turning into hours. I thought yeah. all that was really kind of clever stuff. I liked all, all the steampunkiness of it. Yeah. I didn't really get that, but I'm not a big steampunk fan, so I was looking at it and it's slightly different. But I can see I could see where that's coming yeah. from now that you mentioned it. Especially with Time's design, because you can see like all the gears. I mean, 
on in the back of his head and yeah i was gonna say i really like the design of the time ship mm -hmm. thing uh, the, chronosphere. the chronosphere yeah i thought all that was really cool i like the way alice really mastered it too or like she would like get where she's going jump out of it and like without missing a step grab it off the ground and keep moving i just it was almost kind of ninja like you know so i thought that was really cool <laughs> i really liked hamish well i didn't i didn't like hamish i really liked not liking hamish uh, i'm glad they brought back the same actor he was just as douchey and aggravating as he was in the oh, first no, he one he was douchier because yeah, well, he's yeah. lord hamish now. that's true she's absolutely right she was way douchier and it was great and i'm glad i saw the recent movie more recently so i could kind of remember characters like that because that was that was really almost worth the price of admission alone <laughs> so there you have it that's uh that's pretty much what we thought of alice through the looking glass i'm really glad we saw it i really enjoyed it uh did you guys see it what did you think uh do you agree do you disagree what was your favorite part what was your least favorite part let's talk about all that stuff down in the comments i love to geek out with you guys as you know i do and that's a big part of why i'm doing all this stuff is so that we can all just geek out together you can never have enough geek and nerd love in your life can you <laughs> no is the answer to that um but yeah so let's talk about it and if you enjoyed this video enjoy what we're doing on this channel give me the thumbs up of encouragement encourage me to do more and you know subscribe if you haven't if you're new because we're doing all kinds of fun stuff here every single day and uh we're about to hit ninja turtle week so that should be fun and uh share with your friends especially if they are ninja turtle fans because it's gonna be a party it's gonna be a pizza party <laughs> and uh i yeah so yeah pretty much i'm getting into that blah 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 space that usually means it's time to wrap it up so i guess we're gonna jump out of here and i will see you guys we will see you guys later.